Hello again, watch friends. Welcome back. We all know that watches come in a variety of styles and price ranges. Spending a few hundred dollars can get you a nice watch. Attractive, reliable, and suitable for daily wear. Spending a little bit more, stepping up to about a grand, gets you better quality, better movements, and perhaps more satisfaction and ownership. Here are some suggestions for watches in the $1,000 range that you may find appealing and suitable for either your first watch or adding to your collection. The Casio Oceanus. Don't laugh. This timepiece is well under the 1K bogey since it sells for about $600, more or less. Also, it's the only quartz piece in this list of recommendations. However, the watch looks much more expensive than it is and offers a number of luxury and useful features. First, the case, bezel, and bracelet are all made of titanium, so it's extremely light. In fact, wearing this watch feels like you're not wearing a timepiece at all. Second, it's a world timer with 29 cities available. All you need to do to change the local time is pull out the crown and rotate it to point to the city on the periphery of the dial. Then push the crown back in and watch automatically how the watch adjusts the time to the city. It's really that simple. Another useful feature of the Oceanus is that it's a radio watch, meaning that it receives a timing signal from any of six atomic clocks around the world. This occurs automatically overnight, so the time is always correct. The signal sets the watch to the correct time and date and even tells you if the setting was successful. It can also be done manually if needed. In the U.S., the atomic signal comes from the Naval Observatory in Denver, and I've had no issues with reception of the signal where I live in New Jersey. Finally, this Casio is a solar model, meaning the battery is charged by either natural or artificial light. Power lasts up to seven months on a full charge. If the watch is stored in the dark, in a drawer, say, the watch will save power automatically and the charge will last up to 29 months. That's pretty cool, I think. The Oceanus is just the right size for me, about 40 millimeters in diameter and 10 millimeters thick. It has a very clean black dial, faceted indices that sparkle with a slight bluish color, a partially blued seconds hand, and a curved sapphire crystal. The bracelet is attractive and comfortable, and the two-button clasp works easily and securely. This is an elegant, dressy sports watch that provides enough features to overcome any potential anti quartz anxiety you may have. I highly recommend it. There are many dive watches available for about a grand. Most of these are homages to various Rolex subs or other mid 20th century brands, such as the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms. Most watch enthusiasts have their own favorite, whether it be a Steinhardt, Oris, Squally, OWC, NTH, or some other one. My favorite, and the one I own, is the Gano Ocean Rover. I really like this piece and recommend it for a number of reasons. First, the build quality is excellent. The case, bezel, and tapered bracelet are all top-notch. Few shortcuts were made in the creation of this watch, and that's why it cost a little bit more than some of the others about $1,300. Of special interest is the bracelet, more specifically the clasp. The clasp is a copy of the Rolex Glide Lock adjustment clasp found on the modern Submariner. This clasp allows easy and simple adjustment of the bracelet fit on the fly without the need to resort to any tools. That's fantastic. The second thing this watch has going for it is the attention to detail. The applied round pips on the enameled dial are attached with care. The loom on the pips 
and hands is well applied and there's no spillage. The large crown is easy to grasp, as is the 120 click bezel, which, by the way, shows no play in operation. Solid end links on the bracelet, half links included for sizing, and screws used to secure them are present. A screwdriver is even provided to remove and attach the screwed links. I like the size, about 40 millimeters by 15 millimeters, about a millimeter thicker than the sub, and it wears very comfortably. The final feature I like, and why I recommend this piece, is the accuracy. The watch comes with documentation showing that it's adjusted and regulated over a period of six weeks. The movement is an ETA 2824 clone, which has hacking and hand winding, and although Gnot doesn't claim it's a chronometer, it's accurate to within cost specs of minus four to plus six seconds per day. The Ocean Rover has all the requisite features you'd expect in a premium diver. 300 meter water resistance, dome sapphire crystal, signed crown, high gloss enamel dial with applied indices, and excellent loom, among others. There are several models of the Ocean Rover, some with a date, some without, some with vintage looking loom, and some with modern supernova style loom. And there are even different dial colors. The Gano Ocean Rover is a high end diver that looks great, runs great, and is highly recommended. A tool watch is not only fun to have, but can also be useful. And there's no reason why it can't also be attractive and well built. That's true with the German made SIN 104I STSA. The various letters in the reference refer to the fact that this particular timepiece has indices rather than Arabic numbers to mark the hours, is stainless steel, the bezel, case, and crown, and has a sapphire crystal on both sides of the watch. It's obvious from just looking at the watch that it's a quality piece. Although taking design cues from the chronograph watch, the 104 is not a chronograph, but rather a day-date three-hander. The day can display either English or German. Unlike a dive watch, the ratcheting bidirectional bezel is a count-down type rather than a count-up type. As such, it measures time to completion, and the captive bezel is securely attached with screws rather than simply snapping on with a friction-fitted method so it can't pop off in case of an impact. The 41 millimeter by 11.5 millimeter size offers appropriate proportions for this style of watch. The Zin 104 is a high-end pilot watch which accounts for its $1,300 price. The movement is a chronometer grade, but not COSC certified movement, either an automatic ETA 2824 or a Salida SW220. Water resistance is a more than respectable 200 meters, and the polished stainless steel case is well made. The highly legible matte black dial and white markings have a military aesthetic and add to the readability of the watch. Superluminova coating is applied to the hour markers as well as the syringe style hour and minute hands. Zinn is known for high quality tool watches and the 104 is no exception and should prove to be a dependable daily casual wearer. It can be had on leather with either of two styles of bracelets, H-Link and Fine Link, and in a couple of dial colors. The model 104 ASTSA has Arabic numbers instead of indices. I like German watches. They offer excellent engineering, design, and quality, and are generally a good value. So it's no surprise that when recommending a chronograph in the $1,000 range, I suggest a German brand. In this case, the Fortis Aviatus Flieger Professional. Fortis has a long tradition of producing Flieger style watches, beginning in the mid-1980s with their Flieger Classic line. 
As part of their current professional series, the Aviatus Chrono shows its attention to detail with its applied indices and numerals. The hour and minute hands, as well as the numerals, are coated in a green-tinted superluminova, which provides crisp legibility in any lighting. All chronograph-related hands are painted orange, making for quick and easy identification. The 43mm by 14.5mm case is brushed stainless steel, while the bezel is highly polished and a restyled crown is easy to grip. In addition to the usual chrono subdials, 30 minute counter, 12 hour counter, and running seconds, the matte black dial also features a day and date window at 3 o'clock. The watch is 100 meter water resistant and has a double sided AR sapphire crystal. It uses the ubiquitous Valjoux 7750 movement, beating at 28,800 vibrations per hour and providing about 48 hours of power on a full wind. If you're looking for a quality chronograph, it's hard to beat the Fortis Aviatus Chrono. It can be had on leather strap for $1,270 and on bracelet for a couple hundred dollars more. Keeping with the apparent German brand theme, if you want an authentic Bauhaus-style watch, Stoa is an obvious choice. Other brands offer this style of watch, such as Young Hands, but I like the Stoa Antia models because they seem more robust and offer excellent value. I also like the Stoa Pilot watches, too. You can buy a Bauhaus watch for $250, and I have previously reviewed and recommended the Tissel Bauhaus. But if you want a more substantial watch, meaning a better movement, even top grade, a better case, lugs, dial, etc., you need to spend more money. Stoa has several Bauhaus models to choose from. The one I like the most is the Antia Classic KS. Although it measures a smallish 35 and a half millimeters in diameter, it wears slightly larger on the wrist due to its minimal bezel. The case is highly polished and the slightly oversized signed crown is easy to grip. This is especially important in a hand winder. The silver dial appears white or creamy in different light. The Art Deco typography of the Arabic numbers complements the design. The fact that the numerals from 9 to 3 are read from the inside of the dial while numerals from 4 to 8 are read from the outside adds visual interest. The true blued stick hands appear black in some lighting conditions, but when they catch the light just so, radiate a bright blue color. Simply stunning. And even the small second subdial shows attention to detail with its concentric circles. The anti-reflective coating on the inside of the sapphire crystal aids readability, and the drilled lugs make strap swapping particularly easy. One of the best things about the Antia KS is the movement. It's an ETA 7001 Pousseau beating at 21,600 beats per hour that is surprisingly well finished. There's blue screws, perlage on the base plate, rhodium plating, and even Geneva stripes on the main bridge and they all can be enjoyed by the exhibition case back. Although it's a basic movement offering no hacking, it's a tried and true engine and should be easily serviced if necessary. The German Bauhaus school design is prevalent not just in the specific Bauhaus style watches from a number of brands, but has been inspirational in any number of watches. The clean, minimalist design aesthetic is exemplified in the Antia KS and with its manual wind at a Pesu movement you get a true dress watch classic that you can enjoy both for its pedigree and for its modern mechanical manufacture for just under a grand. If the size is too small Stoa offers more or less the same design in larger models albeit with automatic movements. These are available in 36 and a half millimeters 39 millimeters and 41 millimeters.
Yet another German watch that I like, the more I look at it, is the Hanhart Pioneer 1 three-hander. At first glance, this watch looks like a chronograph, but obviously it's not. Hanhart is traditionally known for its chronograph models, and the Pioneer takes its cues from the well-known aesthetic. The Pioneer 1 is available with either a white dial or a black dial, and now blue and gray dials too, but I like the black dial the best. The minimal date function is almost non-existent, which aids the overall look of the watch. The most prominent feature of this piece is the fluted bezel and fluted oversized crown. Together, they give the watch a tooly look, which I especially like. The bezel has the signature red pip, allowing the bidirectional rotating bezel to function as a count-up timer. And the friction bezel moves easily, but doesn't appear to be susceptible to inadvertent movement. Taking design from the earlier Hanhart caliber 40, 41, and 42 chronos, this 42 millimeter watch is just about the right size for a modern watch. The matte black dial and white painted Arabic numerals provide excellent contrast, making time reading a non-issue. I particularly like the font used for the numerals, especially the 6 and 9 numbers, which to me look a little German-y in appearance. Slightly green loom is applied to the numerals and the syringe style hands. The white dial version of the Pioneer has a red tip on the seconds hand and red minute track numerals. Also, bright white Superluminova is used for the loom. Case thickness is a contemporary 12 millimeters and lug width is 22 millimeters. Fortunately, the lug to lug distance is a relatively short 49 and a half millimeters on the limited edition, so it shouldn't overwhelm smaller wristed watch enthusiasts. The rather sturdy brown calfskin strap is a riveted style with a signed buckle. The movement on the Pioneer is the automatic Salita SW200, an ETA 2824 clone that is ubiquitous in this price range of watches. It offers hacking, a quick set date change, and 38 hour power reserve. The movement can be seen by the exhibition case back, as can the signed rotor. The front crystal is a slightly domed sapphire, as one would expect in a watch of this caliber. No pun intended. Water resistance is a respectable 100 meters. There is also a limited edition version of the Pioneer 1, available only from watch buys. This particular model foregoes the date function, providing a cleaner look but also has a bead blasted case that I think is more attractive than the brushed stainless steel of the regular series production version. Beige loom on this model also provides a hint of a vintage vibe. The Limited also has a solid bead blasted case back with an individual engraved serial number and the shorter lugs I already mentioned. Only 150 of these models have been or will ever be made. If you're in the market for a highly legible tool watch with brand pedigree and a robust movement, the Hanhart Pioneer 1 should be on your short list. The regular version of the Pioneer lists for $1,070 and the limited edition sells for $100 more. If it were me, I'd spend the extra dollars on a limited edition because of its gunmetal bead blasted finish, shorter lugs, meaning better fit, lack of a date function, and exclusivity. It's difficult to not mention a Seiko watch in any suggested collection or roundup, such is the case here. Although Seiko offers watches in a vast array of prices and styles, one watch in the approximately $1,000 price range stands out. That is the Bright's SDGM001 Automatic. The thing that immediately appeals to me is the cream-colored sunburst dial. If you know of the Seiko cocktail time, the SRPB41, then you get the idea. The dial shows off different lighting in a way that will have you mesmerized by the effect. Now, this Brights is an upgrade in many ways 
from other Seiko Sarp and Presage models, starting with the dial. Applied stick markers appear at every hour except 3 o'clock, where there's a date window, and a pair of markers indicates 12 o'clock. The pair of 12 o'clock batons is reminiscent of early Seiko models. I'm talking from the 1960s to 1970s, in that the Seiko grammar of design motif on those initial Grand Seiko, King Seiko, and other watches had also the twin markers at 12 o'clock. Second, the batons are reminiscent of modern Grand Seiko indices, at least in shape. Of course, they're not hand-cut and beveled as finely as those on the Grand Seiko models, but the indices on the brights are very attractive and well-finished. A blued seconds hand offers a nice contrast against the creamy champagne dial, and a fine minute second track printed in black complements the look. Also, an extremely classy black onyx stone on the crown provides a crowning touch. Uh, sorry. Other upgrades over other popular Seiko models include a dome double anti-reflective sapphire crystal. Seiko calls it Comfortex technology, which is very clear. The crystal, that is, not necessarily the brand name for the crystal. Dia shield treatment on both the 40.5 millimeter case and bracelet add additional scratch protection and there are very attractive sword hands. Case thickness of 11.5 millimeters is acceptable. A Hardlex exhibition case back shows off Seiko's 6R15C caliber and a more than respectable 100 meter water resistance is on tap. The 20 millimeter lug width bracelet is also a step up in fit and finish from, for example, the bracelets used on Sarb models. Also, drilled lugs, something you don't often see at this price point, allow you to easily swap out the bracelet for other straps if you should so desire. The 6R15 movement hacks, meaning the second hand stops when the crown is pulled out, so setting it to a time standard is made easy and can be hand wound. This is the same automatic movement used in Seiko's Prospect line and the Sarb models, such as the Sarb 033 and Sarb 017. Brights is Seiko's line of mid-tier watches and are JDM, Japanese domestic market models, but are readily available in the US and other locations, as have been other Seiko JDMs over the last couple of years. It lists for $900, but can be had for less. I think Long Island Watch is selling it right now for mid $700. A stunning, now discontinued black version, the SDGM003, was also available. If you're interested in a quality Seiko dress watch, the SDGM001 may be the one. It may seem odd that four of the seven watches presented here are made in Germany. That's not a random event, as it turns out. I strongly believe that German branded watches, and these models in particular, offer excellent value for the money, often surpassing the value coefficient of similarly priced Swiss brands. Japanese brands, primarily Seiko, don't compete exactly in this price range. In Seiko's case, a number of excellent choices are available in the $500 to $700 range. Then the next level up is the roughly $1,500 to $2,000 range. Of course, Grand Seiko models are pricier, starting at about $4,000. I hope you found something that piqued your horological interest in this selection. I personally own four of the seven watches mentioned and enjoy them as much as my costlier pieces. If you like this video, please click on the subscribe button to be alerted of future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.